Yeah, I think Chris Candido is one of the more underrated wrestlers. Wow. You know this fellow. Do you recognize this fellow? Yeah, this is Lance Storm. I recognize him. There's another great performer that went to WCW and did quite well. How young is Lance Storm here, by the way? Wow. 28 years old, I believe, here. And uh, showing oh, a little cool. respect to Chris Candido. How, how would you describe Lance Storm's hairdo right here? Uh, that would be a cocktail. A, a C-O-C-K-T-A-I-L. Okay. A cocktail. It feels like a uh, swap meet special. Oh. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, I've, I've never known a dude from Calgary, Alberta, Canada to like go to the barber and be like, make me look like I'm from rural Alabama. Uh, yeah. Right. Make me look like a girl from rural Alabama. I, want, I know I didn't wear a denim jacket and drive in here in an old Trans Am with T-tops blasting air area speed wagon. But I'm going to need you to go ahead and pretend like I did yeah. and uh, give me that Alabama special. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested to, to notice here, and this happened in the first match, the entrances for the other guy or the opponent seems to take quite a while here. It seems like they're building up the suspense. Would that be correct? I mean, they they announce now, they announce uh, Landstorm. Uh, it's Rob Van Dam. He was Son in, of a bitch. He was in uh, WCW for Hiccup. As yes, as he was. Robbie V. Robbie V. Were right. you in the? I mean, were you um, hopeful mm. that Rob Van Dam might wind up in WCW at some point? At, here in early '97, he was regarded as being one of the bright prospects in professional wrestling. Yes, he was, and uh, there was hope that he would be become that as well. And I guess the concern was because they thought he looked like facially. Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's why he took the name of Robbie Van Damme. Well, and I guess I think he's just trying to work a gimmick. I mean, if you could have been Jimmy Schwarzenegger, you would have, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mikey oh, Stallone. Man. Holy shit. He's hopping around, twirling around like a cheerleader now. All right. Here we go. What? Would you see him hop and twirl and spin and yeah. all that stuff? I mean, I thought I saw it move on you. You're getting really excited there. <laughs> Well, he was just hot. I mean, it, was, it, it almost for a minute looked like uh, the NCAA cheerleading finals won by the uh, the little girls from University of Kentucky. And here how, we go. How about the dude underneath the hard cam smoking weed on camera? <laughs> All of why a sudden, not? you see a little it, puff of smoke come from down below, and you're like, okay. <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> if if you got him, smoke him. Uh, and if you don't, here's one for you as well. Also notice Bill Lapter uh, and his bald spot is here. And George, how you doing? Napolitano is here as well. And Jimmy Suzuki may be here as well. Bunch of shutter bugs. And up top, Lance Storm to the midsection and to the near side. Are they bleeding yet? Not Are yet. they through a table yet? It, I'll have you know there was no wow. bleeding or table spots in match one at all. Wow. And there were no tags in match one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not a damn one of them. Yeah, I guess yeah. they shouldn't have been the tag team champions. They should have been the uh, the four man champions or Texas you know, Tornado champions. Right? Take the word tag yeah. out, right? I mean, there's no yeah. tagging. Right, Ex exactly. Uh, and here's Van Dam with a series of kicks, a deep arm drag takedown going up top. Whoa, he connected. And only got a one count out of that. And now they go on to the outside. Now, this is where ECW is at its best, right? On the outside. Oh, suicide dive. Nicely done. And, and again, in the in the grand storyline of, of old school wrestling, if you execute a dive like that early in the match, where do you go from here, right? I mean, we... I. I never, I always scratch my head about that. And I don't want to be seen as just an old fart. Well, you I guess are, it, you are, you're dick born in it right now. I mean, okay. here's the thing. I know this isn't popular and you're going to be super mad at me, but I had a conversation and I'll reveal who it was with in a minute, yeah. but he grew up a big mid Atlantic fan and he grew up on the good old days, so to speak. But even he told me this weekend, man, you go back and watch that stuff. God, it's so boring. You know I mean? It's what he grew up on, so he loves it, and he has a soft spot in his heart for it. But you yeah. compare it to you know wrestling in 2018, or even wrestling here in 1997 in ECW, and there's yeah. just no comparison. Well, okay, I agree, uh, and and that's because that's because society has changed 
what society likes and what we have been exposed to. I would say that had we been exposed to this type of wrestling, whoa, uh, landstorm over the top. Had we been exposed to this type of wrestling in 1977, 20 years earlier, we would have, we would have thought of this the greatest thing ever. Right. We really would have. Uh, and he's going to take Bill after and shove his skitty ass around and go after Landstorm again. It, it was sort of interesting that Rob had Whoa. to do that. It's like, what the fuck was Bill thinking? Like, dude, I'm throwing yeah. dudes in your direction. Get out of the way. And you never saw Bill after out of position, but it just goes to show you how tight of quarters they had because the, the separation between the guardrail and the ring on this side underneath the hard cam is T tiny. There's no yeah. room to move around at all. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's gotta be, uh, it's got to be hot in there, I would think, or or I I don't. What time of year was this uh, when they did this? Uh, April, April thirteenth, nineteen ninety seven, corner of Swanson and Rittner. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now he's got a chair, and all of a sudden we are six, seven minutes into the match, and they're using a chair. Of course they are, and this is what it's all about. Uh, smart me up here. Uh, Paulie dangerously ran the company, right? Yes. Whoa. Not only does he hit a chair, he throws it at that motherfucker, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go hit him with a chair. Hell no. I'm throwing it at that motherfucker. Wow. My God. I loved okay. it. I, as a kid, man, I thought that was awesome. Like, yeah. Why well, just keep it? Just throw it at him. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just, it's just absolutely doing something absolutely different that. I don't remember seeing that. I don't remember seeing someone throw a chair at someone else and using the chair on the feet with a baseball slide drop kick and Rob Van Dam. Wow, making some real good moves here. And looking pretty good here in the opening moments of this matchup, which I'm assuming is uh and of course I wasn't listening. Is it is is Rob here like a substitute or is Lance Armstrong a substitute for Chris Candido? If Lance, couldn't make it? if Lance Armstrong was here, it would be a totally different show. Oh, did I say Lance? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I pancaked him face first. Here's the difference, too. Lance yeah. Storm never doped. No, no, he did not. Lance Storm is as clean as a whistle, unlike okay. Klondike Bill or Lance Armstrong. <laughs> Up on top, Van Dam with a big splash. And he doesn't cover him. Now he does. One, two. See now that's now that is silly. Okay. Yeah. So that, the, I, I understand hardcore wrestling, I guess. But if you don't want to pin him at the beginning, why do you try to turn around and pin him after that? I guess so. I should tell you, uh, not too long before <laughs> this. <laughs> Just throw it at that motherfucker. Good God. Good God. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm I, I'm glad Lois is not watching because she may end up throwing in a chair at me one day. Good God. Holy shit. All right. I just said, I'm just kind of sitting here waiting. What the fuck's going to happen next? There you go. Jab it in his eye. All right. Don't know what that was about. Okay. Let the down for his opponent to slam him face first on. I got it now. I got it. I don't know about you, but man, I'm out of breath watching this stuff. And we're only like 10 minutes into this match. Man, I've seen this pay-per-view so many times. You know, at the I just, time... They were not on all pay-per-view systems, so I couldn't get the pay-per-view. I had to convince a guy that my dad worked with to order wow. it, and with the promise that I would give him the money for it, just order the damn pay-per-view and bring me a VHS. So I got to watch it on April 14th, right after school. Handspring by uh, uh, Lance Storm, and he's going to go up top to connect with Robbie Van Dam and a great forearm shot off the top. There you go. Cover hooks a far leg and got a, a two count. I, I do need to say, interject something here if I can, uh, you know, the debut of uh, MLW fusion is coming up this Friday uh, on a BN sports network. And I was amazed. Maybe you won't be, but I was amazed at how many holds I had forgotten and maneuvers I had forgotten. So I'm sure there's going to be people out there saying, Shivani didn't know shit. Well, guess what? You're right. It's going to take a little while to get back into it. Well, I, I know people are excited to see you back in wrestling, and, and I guess we should tell everybody that BN Sports is actually on DirecTV. So if you've got DirecTV, you probably have this channel. Uh, you can find out all about it on the MLW Twitter feed 
or of course, MLW.TV or anywhere you find MLW news, uh, you'll be able to sort of keep abreast of all the different ways you can watch it, but it's a big deal. Whenever a wrestling promotion gets on TV, there's only a handful of those doing it. WWE, of course, Lucha Underground, Impact, uh, Ring of Honor, and now MLW. So uh, support Tony, support MLW, support independent wrestling. Of course, it's going to be hot that I called it independent, but it's not yes, WWE, yes. but still it's going to have a big time feel to it because that's what court does. Yeah, I, yeah, and he, he's doing a great job with it, and, you know, it's going to throw it at him again. Why not? Oh, and he crowned him with it. Uh, you're right about uh, calling independent wrestling. I mentioned independent wrestling and uh, on, on one of the matches, and there's a two count, and Court said to me in his great uh, best Vince McMahon voice, it's not independent wrestling, God damn it! It's MLW. I said, okay, thank you, little Vinny. Did he say God damn it, too? <laughs> Yes, he did. That's awesome. So by okay. the way, I guess we should mention Lance Storm just power bombed this motherfucker on a chair. Yeah. And then like leg dropped him off the top onto the chair. They're pulling out all the stops in this, and it's just the second match, Tony. Second match, and this is what hardcore is all about, Conrad Thompson. Back elbow and a standing switch. Why not a standing switch after all this shit? And Van Dam tries to kick out of it. Lance Storm grab oh! A yeah. nut shot. Right and in the I dick. guess right in the dick. Right in the dick. I I guess I guess nut shots are legal in hardcore wrestling. Is that correct? They are. Okay. Very good. Oh, he fell down. Oh, he completely missed. Absolutely completely missed. And the fans chant <laughs> the, the fans are chanting, You, you fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> you fucked up. Can you imagine if they tried to chant that shit at Ole Anderson in about nineteen eighty four? Oh God, he would have gone out in the crowd and grabbed one smallest guy. He could have found, but he would have grabbed one. Uh, you fucked up you. Oh my God. German suplex on the back of his head with a bridge. Yes. With a bridge. Let me ask you, since you followed this, their head, the, the, the injury rate had to be phenomenal. Now nah, these guys rubbed dirt on it and kept going, man. You just saw Bubba Ray break his fucking foot in the first match. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, and I get that, but for for crying out loud, Van Dam back up, and the chair has been used back and forth, and the fans again cheering on. Oh, one, two, three. So, what would you call the finish? There, he throws the chair at his opponent. The opponent catches it, and then he kicks it in their uh -huh. face. What would you call it? <laughs> okay, that would be. Uh, uh, well, you're you're trying you're trying my my I'm trying my best here. It, it would be what the oh wait a minute, wait a minute. What what about the uh, fuck your couch? <laughs> fuck your couch. Fuck your couch. Okay, how about fuck your chair? Uh, how about uh, fuck you in the face? Fuck you in the face. That's kind of what he did. And Storm is going to get up. Now, apparently something's going to happen here because they're both back up. Van Dam's getting a lot of birds from the front row. I guess we should mention here that a couple of weeks prior to this, WWE allowed them to come on to their show and sort of showcase what ECW was all about and give them some publicity for the pay-per-view. And one of the things they got to do is have Rob Van Dam work a match, and he got a little bit of prime time play. And so now he's trying to call himself Mr. Monday night, Rob Van Dam with the idea that he's too big for this place. He's too good for here. He's only here a little while longer. And then he's going to Monday night because that's where all the money is. The real question is, where am I going? And so he's cutting a promo about how he feels passed over because he wasn't out here to get any of those people's respect. He's out here to get a job on Monday night and not to be some sort of stand in or backup or replacement character. Cause Chris Got Candido it. was of course injured. Right. And so that's why the fans are popping him the bird. Cause they're pissed off because he's turning his back on EC fucking W. Yeah. They, he, they say that he turned his back on the fans much like Bruce and I did when we got a network show. Right. Absolutely. You did. Well, I mean, you turned your back on the fans too, because now you work for uh mlw and you're on cable calling wrestling again and you've turned your back on us tony how did i turn my back on you guys well how did i turn my back when i did something for the network uh, well because you 
you uh, sold out to. Uh, oh, you're working the, for free down there. Yeah, you sold out to the evil empire. You see. Well, Court's trying to build an evil empire. Well, he ain't got it yet, but you have sold out to the evil empire. I'm still doing the fucking shows. I'm on here naming finishing moves to fuck you in the face. I mean, I don't know how much I've sold out. Okay. I'm just, uh, now have you, uh, on social media, have you, uh, have people say that you're selling out? Oh my have gosh. You? So much. Hey, so there's a famous row of, of fans here. You got the Howard Stern guy. You see the Howard Stern fan, right? And then you've also got the straw hat guy. Hawaiian right, shirt sir. guy, right. And one of those guys is Mike Johnson, who who works for uh, PW Insider, which is arguably one of the biggest wrestling news sites around. It's in the same conversation with a Dave Meltzer, Wade Keller, or Wrestle Zone, or whatever you're into. And and Mike's a good friend of mine, but I don't think I've always noticed that he was cheering his ass off in the front row.